Functions are special R objects that take in other objects as arguments and produce something. In many cases, the person who wrote the function provides default values for some or even all of the arguments. We've now seen a couple important functions and techniques. First, we saw the concatenate function that was used to create vectors. And we saw we could create vectors that are sequences of integers using the integer colon integer notation. We used the length, head, and tail functions to learn more about vectors. We also saw character vectors. The letters object is a built-in vector of letters inside of R, and if we wanted, we could examine a subset of the letters. We also saw how to construct matrices using the matrix function, as well as how to specify the number of rows and columns for a matrix using the second and third arguments. The dim function provided a way to check the dimensions of a matrix, and we could again use brackets to examine a subset of the matrix, except that we specified both rows and columns, or just one. Videos are great, but they're no stand-in for documentation. Thankfully, most functions in R are very well documented. To access the help file for a function, just type a question mark, the function name, and then hit return. Here's the help file for the sequence function. At the top of the file is a description of the sequence function and other related functions described in this help file. The next section shows the sequence function and its variants, and the arguments section provides details for what type of inputs are reasonable and how to specify additional options. The next sections of particular interest are the see also and examples sections. It's a good idea to take a look at the example section early on when you're exploring a new function. On OS X, it's also easy to run examples from the help file by highlighting the example text, holding down command, and then hitting return. Congratulations, you've completed the first section of R videos. Take some time to try out what you've learned, and when R gives you an error, uh, check for typing mistakes, which are common. After you've finished experimenting, fuel up and start section two.